part of this province where in blizzard conditions today, a plane with 12 people on board made a hard and frightening landing. Andrua has more about that and about some snow preparations on the south coast in our top story. B.C. is getting battered yet again. This is the 14th storm to hammer the province, and it's already leaving a path of destruction. On Vancouver Island, where the storm first hit, fierce winds creeped up hard and fast, downing trees and power lines, leaving thousands without power. All we can do is close the thing up, really. The tills don't work. Well, they were in the living room, which is where the couch is. In Souk, a mother and her newborn were trapped inside their home after a massive tree came crashing down. Emergency crews managed to crawl inside and save them, and they miraculously escaped without injury. Uh, they should be buying lottery tickets today, I think. That wasn't the only structure, though, that fell victim to this windstorm. In a short time, several other homes down the street were hit by falling trees. And if it wasn't the wind, it was the snow. In northeastern B.C., a small passenger plane crashed in blizzard-like conditions while trying to land at the Fort St. John Airport. Luckily, all 12 passengers and crew escaped uninjured. It appears that they touched down prior to the runway and sheared off two sets of marker lights uh, prior to the end of the runway and then skidded on the snow onto the runway and the nose gear and the right main gear of the aircraft were sheared off on the impact. And in Prince George, blowing snow blanketed highways and roads, making driving treacherous. At least 10 centimeters of snow fell, keeping residents busy. In the greater Vancouver area, over a dozen salt trucks are on standby, preparing for snow. About two centimeters is expected to fall this evening, five in the Fraser Valley, possibly ten centimeters by morning. No surprise, all this stormy weather is taking its toll on crews. We're all back at it. Uh, we're, we're certainly back up to full staff. Uh, we'll just have to uh, see what happens over, over the next few days with uh, storm number 14. A storm that's leaving its mark with Mother Nature showing no sign of giving the West Coast a rest. The severe weather is once again wreaking havoc with road travel across B.C. and the Trans-Canada Highway heading into Alberta is closed yet again. An avalanche late this afternoon just west of Rogers Pass shut down Highway 1 between Revelstoke and Golden. And it won't be open until tomorrow morning at the earliest. The slide also closed the CP rail line. There are no fewer than 14 separate travel advisories tonight covering a number of highways throughout the province. And you can get the latest information online at drivebc.ca. And this latest storm didn't bode well for Stanley Park, already badly damaged by two windstorms in the past month. Westerly winds strike the park directly. And with many trees already weakened or exposed, there has been more damage in our park. Our Chris Galis is live in Stanley Park tonight with the latest conditions and with a look at Prospect Point, where slope stability is a major concern. Chris? Yeah, Tony, what an adventure we've had in Stanley Park so far today. Uh, just incredible windstorm that showed up at around 3 o'clock while we were up by the Prospect, Par uh, Prospect Point Cafe. And we're going to show you some of the video from that because shortly after we started shooting, the trees started coming down again. A lot of people were up by the cafe when uh, the windstorm arrived, and it whipped through with incredible force. You can see the flag there, and a lot of people started to scatter. They started getting us out of there because trees started coming down. This is one of three that came down onto Stanley Park Drive, just around the corner from the Prospect Point Cafe. And a woman was injured over by the pitch and putt when a tree came down right on top of her. Thankfully, there was a guy there to save her. Um, I was walking uh, towards the beach, and she was coming the other way. We passed each other. The wind picked up. We both gave each other a look and got 10 feet apart, heard a crack. I ran one way, she ran the other. The tree came down, and when it fell down, I couldn't see her, so I ran around the other side of the tree and still couldn't see her, so I started calling and spreading branches. And there she was underneath. She was conscious, um, very disoriented. I tried to lift the tree off, and it was way too heavy, so then I just ran up, and the parts board was coming down, flagged them down, and got on the phone. And we were told that she has head injuries, a leg injury, but is expected to recover, and you can see further damage throughout the park today. This is all new video. This just happened this afternoon. A Vancouver Parks and Recreation van 
uh, as you can see, demolished underneath the trees. Uh, there were many that were falling around the park late this afternoon, and they are very concerned about the stability of a lot of those trees all along the cliffside up above the seawall. That seems to be uh, a real area of concern for uh, park staff and for the um, hazard tree inspectors that we were out with today. Uh, every time a windstorm like this comes up, Tony, uh, it seems like the situation changes and it makes it very difficult for them to get a handle on how long it's going to take to stabilize the cliffside, how long it's going to take to stabilize some of those trees that are perched up above the seawall, and how long it's going to take to get that seawall back open. But they told us yesterday, as you saw in our coverage, it could be months. And we got a very good indication of how dangerous it was and how quickly things changed today when uh, a CBC satellite truck was trying to get out of the area after we were told to evacuate, and a tree came down. You'll watch it here in the videotape. It looks like the tree just catches the truck, the sat truck, right on the back corner as it's going by. It was that close, and our camera crew had gone through that area maybe two minutes prior, uh, and we actually got caught in the picnic area in between two trees that had fallen on Stanley Park Drive. We're thankful to the park's crew for getting out the chainsaws and uh, moving that log because uh, we would have been stuck there for most of the night if they didn't come in and move that stuff. And in fact, there was a busload, 48 Australian uh, students that were up at uh, Prospect Point Cafe that were trapped in the same area we were and uh, led out again by park staff after they got the chainsaws out. But they have shut this place down. It is completely uh, deserted right now, and they want everybody to stay out of the park until they decide that it's safe, which could be, again, several hours, if not days. Tony? All right, Chris, thanks very much. Now to the seawall in Stanley Park. Many people use it every day for biking and hiking and all forms of recreation. But as Ted Field reports, the storm damage to the seawall is already so extensive that it may be months before it's fully reopened. The cleanup is underway on the seawall, but this is the simple stuff. Getting rid of branches that have fallen on the wall that was not directly hit by the huge wind blast. But on the other side of the Lionsgate Bridge, the damage is massive. Large trees have tumbled down the bluffs, damaging the seawall and closing it from the bridge to Third Beach. We really don't even know from a logistics point of view what we're into in terms of trying to pick those fallen trees or damaged trees or uprooted root balls out of there. And in terms of cost, I mean, is there any estimate right now? None at all. Mm -hmm. It's going to be pricey, though. It, it will be pricey. Speaking of pricey, they don't yet know the full extent of damage to the actual wall. In some places, waves tossed around the pavement like paper. We fear we may have some voids underneath uh, the walkway and bikeway areas, and we will want to test and make sure that those are dealt with uh, before we reopen it. Most of the seawall is open despite some rather large obstacles, but a lot of people like to go right around the park, and it could be weeks or even months before that can happen again. Well, I think it's, it's not about the money. I think it's more about, <laughs> and more about just the whole fact that this is a way of life. This is part of what we do. Um, so it's, it's just unfortunate. And I went through it on Saturday or Sunday, and uh, a lot of the trails that we're used to going through are, are just totally blocked by large trees. And there's other ones that are dangling and, uh, and also attached to other trees. So it's not over yet. And park officials wish people would consider avoiding hazards and respect yellow tape while using the beloved seawall. Now, all this week we're providing you...